Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of Spitting Venom, aka The Venom Blog. This is episode 95. I'm in my car and we're about to head to Golden Apple Comics. Uh, they have a comic book down there for me. It's the first appearance of Anne Weying, uh, you know, Venom's ex-wife. And she first appeared in Amazing Spider-Man 375. And I thought I had that book in my collection. I was pretty sure I did. And when I was going through my collection, I was like, holy crap, it's not here. Uh, actually, a chunk of those Venom comics that I had from the 90s are not there anymore. So I'm guessing at some point I either sold them or I gave them to somebody and I just didn't think about it or maybe they were put in a separate short box that I thought was okay. And sometimes, you know, when I'm moving and stuff like that, I'll be like, hey, that box of comics, I'm pretty sure nothing in there is what I want. Or I'll flip through it real quickly and not see the books I really want. And be like, here, give it to a friend. Be like, here, you can take this short box, you know. And uh, I've done that a lot of times in the past. And so I'm sure somewhere out there that Venom comic uh, and a couple of them are out there. So I got to track down a few pieces to, you know, refinish my collection. So we're, uh, at least the 90s stuff. I'm not, I don't really care about the later stuff. Uh, but I, the 90s stuff is the stuff I grew up with. And that's the stuff I want to, like, you know, have still. So first appearance of Ant and Wang, that's a key issue. So so we're going to go pick that up. And speaking of Anne Wang, that's what we're going to talk about in today's episode after we go on our little uh, spider journey. Uh, we're going to come back to my house and we're going to talk about uh, Anne Wang's stunt double. Uh, Michelle Williams now has a stunt double listed on IMDb. And we're going to talk about what that might mean for the character and what might that mean for the story of the movie. So we'll get into that in a minute. But first, we have a journey to go on. So let's go pick up a Spider-Man comic. All right, so it was a mission success. I actually picked up Amazing Spider-Man 375 at Golden Apple for $4. And the main reason it's a, it was $4 wasn't because they were you know, trying to give me a deal or anything. It's actually beat the hell. This issue is pretty bad. There's like this weird mark here with the, the gold foil like smeared in. There's like all these dirty dirt prints up here. There's bends all down the spine of it. It's actually in pretty crappy condition. But I don't care. Uh, and, and and actually my friend Joe at Golden Apple, he was the one who found this and he said, yeah, I thought this was here. Like when we did the Mace episode together, he was like, I'll look for it for you and I'll put it in your pull box. And he did. And that was really nice of him. Uh, I told him I did not care about condition. And the reason being is because as a collector, sometimes I get things and I, I keep them in mint condition. I want them in mint condition. But a lot of times when it's moments in comic books, I do not. Uh, because the moment to me is more important than anything. Uh, these are memories that have transcended my even my own memory loss. There are things I still remembered in comics that happened uh, when I didn't even know like my own name at times. Uh, this is the kind of stuff I like to collect. These are things that are precious to me and why I don't care about the condition of them because it's not about that. And this book right here to me is one of the biggest turning points for this character of Venom in all the comics. Uh, so when I saw that it was missing from my collection, my heart was broken a little bit. I was like, come on, you got to be kidding me. I was missing issue three. 374 and 375. Luckily, I found 374 at House of Secrets, and I got 375 here today, which was really great. And in this issue, it's the first appearance of Anne Wang, uh, Eddie Brock's ex-wife. And if you don't know the story already, I'll briefly tell you. It's basically Spider-Man. His parents have come back into his life, Peter Parker's parents, come back into his life, and Venom has kidnapped them. And, you know, at this point in the comics, Venom has finally started to become more of an anti-hero and started to lean more towards being a good guy. But uh, he's still, like anything, his skew, his, his visions on things, like his, his viewpoint was always skewed and broken. So he has a reason for kidnapping the Parkers, but it wasn't to harm them. It was to protect them. And he explains it in this book. Uh, but first, it, had, it starts off with Spider-Man going to uh, Anne Weying. He tracks her down. He's like, look, I hate to break your privacy and invade your personal life but lives are at stake, including my parents. Like, my parents' lives are at stake. He doesn't really say it's his parents, but he says, two people close to me, because obviously he doesn't want to give away a secret identity. Uh, but he says, please, will you help me? So she tells him about some places Eddie used to take her to, and he talks. she talks about how she was in love with Eddie and how when she first met him, he was kind of had boyish, like, you know, charm to him, and, and it kind of swept her off her feet. She liked that. He was kind of old school. Um, but whenever uh, Eddie's dad was around, Carl Brock, uh, Eddie, Eddie Brock's father, uh, he was not a very nice guy. And he was actually um, always, every time he was around, Eddie changed around his dad. And he was like a little bit more uh, rough and, and hard edged. And he wasn't so charming and everything. He kind of let that side of him hide because he didn't want that side to be seen by his father because his father saw it as weakness. Um, and remember, Eddie Brock, his father hates him because uh, Eddie Brock is is the reason his own mom died he, when she died giving uh, childbirth and obviously that's not Eddie's fault but that's what Eddie's dad kind of blames him for so you get a little bit of Eddie Brock's backstory you get uh, you get an understanding of why maybe his viewpoint on the world is broken because he is not to blame for his mom's passing but because someone does blame him 
it has skewed his sense of reality. It has it's skewed his sense of right and wrong and blame and, and no blame. You know, it, it's messed him up completely. And he tried to fight that side when he was around Anne, but, you know, after he lost his job and, you know, he was exposed as a liar, his dad broke all communication with him, and then it drove Eddie to depression and anger and, you know, and going down that spiral that Anne did not want to follow him. So she tells Spider-Man, I couldn't go down that road with him, so we got a divorce. And I've been living my life. I got my name changed back, and I've been living my life as a lawyer and just not in communication with him and I, I miss him dearly and I wish he was still the man I fell in love with but uh, and I still hope he will be one day but I, I you know I have lost contact with him I don't know what's going on and he's like yeah well Eddie is is a is a bad guy he's he's this creature named Venom and he has two people and I need help finding him so Anne helps him and Spider-Man and Anne go and and try to you know talk Eddie down and get the Parkers back and they're unable to do it because the Wild Pack show up and screw everything up Silver Sable and her group the Wild Pack they show up and screw up everything you know the, the plans and Eddie looked like he was actually gonna turn for a second he says he tells Peter I'm not here to hurt your parents I'm here to hurt you I'm here to protect them like everyone in Peter Parker's life gets you know dies or or gets hurt in some way and I don't want that to happen to your parents so I am protecting them from you and so again you can see his his uh, point of view on things is skewed still he thinks he's doing the right thing but he's going about the wrong way doing it and that's just Venom and Eddie Brock in a nutshell, pretty much. So, uh, so he's trying to, you know, protect the Parkers. But in the end, uh, you know, the the Wild Pack they're shooting their guns everywhere. They're shooting Venom, and uh, the Ferris wheel falls over. Eddie goes and grabs it, and he's holding it up, but his suit is being melted off because he's getting hit with beams and stuff from the Wild Pack. So he's trying his best to use his strength, but obviously the symbiote's leaving him. So he's going to be just a normal man in so, in a few seconds, and he's going to get crushed. Then Spider-Man comes over, helps him. They lift it off and throw it, and uh, and then that Spider-Man proving to Eddie that he actually does care about innocent people and he didn't want Anne to be killed because of his actions and and that's when Eddie sees okay Peter can get people involved in dangerous things and he can protect them he can save them and so they make a deal uh, Eddie says I'll go to San Francisco and I'll get away from you I'll stay out of New York and you just don't hunt me down and Spider-Man's like uh, okay because at this point in the comic Spider-Man still hasn't really beaten Eddie Brock in a fight uh, against Venom they've captured him a few times but he keeps getting out so as far as Spider-Man's concerned, he's like, this is probably the best option. And maybe there is some goodness in him, so I'm going to have a little bit of faith. So they shake hands, and they go their separate ways. So to me, this is one of the most pivotal uh, comics in the history of Venom, because this is what set him on the path of anti-hero, and, uh, and someone who, uh, you know, is a good, you know, ultimately a good person who just has a bad luck pretty much even worse luck than spider-man maybe and it sends him on a path of his solo adventures and non as a non-spider-man character for the most part so it's pretty cool so that's in a lot of the movie stuff uh, you know lethal protector planet of symbiotes even though spider-man's in both those stories those came from you know this moment like they spawned out of this storyline going forward so and even written by the same guy david michelini so yeah this book was important to me to have so i'm glad i have it and it ties into what I want to talk about today, which is real quickly, which is uh, I saw IMDb updated a stunt double for Michelle Williams. So this gave me a little hope because I was kind of worried Michelle Williams was maybe just going to be the girlfriend role or just the damsel in distress or whatever. And I, I hope that's not the case. And I don't think she would take a role like that because she's such a phenomenal actress and she chooses her roles wisely. And I know she wanted to work with Tom because she wanted to act off against him and, and really, you know, chew up scenes with him. And to me, that's really great. So I, I'm thinking once I saw that Sarah Holden here, who's done stunts on Transformer movies, Jupiter Ascending, uh, Chicago PD, I think, and Chicago Fire, Walking Dead. Like, she's done so many great things. She has a great career here, and she does a lot of stunts. And she's doing the stunts for Michelle Williams, which could mean a couple things. It could be something simple of just, like, her falling and Venom catching her. Um, it could mean, you know, her, you know, uh, getting tossed across a room or an explosion going off and diving away from the explosion. Could mean a couple different things, or just being in a car, you know, just driving in a car at a high speed you know whatever uh, it could be anything like that so um so i don't know what the what she's doing stunt wise but the fact that there is a stunt double makes me feel good about Anne's character being in the thick of it like she's not going to just be some bystander or some damsel in distress hopefully uh hopefully she's someone who you know gets involved in some way and maybe tries to save eddie at some point or or by doing so you know falls off a building and you get the big monster moment where she gets caught by the monster of the movie you know kind of like king kong or like uh you know like beauty and the beast or something like you get like some cool heroic moment but it's slightly less heroic because it's a giant monster that catches her um but this this made me you know kind of smile and go okay cool well, now that because I was waiting for them to update Michelle Williams the stunt double so now that they have and I don't know if we mentioned this before or not but I this is I saw this and I thought 
I think this is new, but if I talk about, uh, if I mentioned this briefly before, let me know. But I always did intend to make a video on it. So that's what I'm doing today since we got the comic. It was a nice way to tie it in together. So what do you guys think of Sarah Holden coming on as the stunt double? What do you think the scene will be or scenes will be with Michelle Williams' character and how she'll be involved? What kind of stunt do you think she'll do? Do you think she'll, maybe she'll have a flamethrower and, and like, you know, use it on Scream or something? Um, who knows? But uh, I know she's not going to do She Venom because she already talked about... Um, not doing any motion capture stuff. So this is purely just a stunt double for probably a couple of little scenes. But it, it made me excited knowing that she'll be involved more than just like, you know, on the sidelines. And that's and that's what I wanted from the character. So I'm excited for that. So let me know what you guys think of that down below. And let me know what you think of Amazing Spider-Man 375. Do you own it? Have you read it? I know we talked about it before. Let me know what you thought of what I said down in the comments below and I will definitely reply. So thank you guys so much for watching my show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.